Today we're going to be talking about render farms for 3D artists. Should you use them? I think that entirely depends on who you are and what you do with 3D. If you want the short answer, if you're just a casual 3D artist, maybe you just do it for a hobby, probably don't need to use render farms. Uh, you may as well just render on your own computer and save cost. However, if you work professionally within the 3D uh, industry, uh, then I definitely would recommend using Render Farm. Uh, I'm someone who works professionally within 3D uh, rendering. The Render Farm that I use is called Garage Net. I guess the number one reason for a professional to use a Render Farm is that it saves time. Now, my computer has a 3070 graphics card. 3070 Super? Now, why actually do you need to render faster as a professional? Well, time is money and all that means is that you can use your computer for other projects. Um, I always had the problem uh, as I did my first sort of year or two uh, in 3D rendering where I would set something to render and it, let's say it's quite a extensive scene that my computer would basically be useless while rendering other than just surfing, you know, the internet and things. Uh, I couldn't actually do any more work on other projects or another part of the project on the computer uh, because it would just crash. Uh, that's going to be the case with even really good computers, um, especially if you're working on a scene that is very advanced or very complicated. Another thing that I would say is that I would only really recommend using render farms if you do animation or still renders. It's not really worth it. Generally, if you optimize your scene, uh, you can get the render times for a still image down. Even if it's a really high quality image and you want it to look really good, still might only take 10 to 20 minutes. Now, if you want to do really high quality animations and you want to keep that high quality over a long period of time, you're going to be talking really long render times. Now, I'm going to show an example project for myself and show you how much time that I saved. <clears throat> Okay, so this is what the interface looks like on GarageNet. These are the, my uh, projects that I've recently rendered through the render farm. Now, I'm going to show you this project here. As you can see, it was 192 frames in the animation. Now, on, Garage, uh, on GarageNet, there are three tiers of speed in terms of rendering uh, as they go up in price as they go along. So if you're in a really big rush, you can put it on the high one, spend more money, but it will start rendering quicker. Or if you put it on the low, sometimes it will cost a fair bit less, but sometimes you'll be waiting a little bit for um, for the render to actually start. Now, I've actually never, I do it on low pretty much all the time. I never really use medium or high. I've only occasionally used high before where I had a deadline for the same day. Either way, on low, I've never waited longer than sort of 20 minutes, or 20, yeah, about 20 minutes for the render to actually start. Okay, so as you can see, 192 frames, and now the project started rendering at 12.37, and then the last frame finished down here, the last few frames finished at 12.52. This animation basically took 40 minutes to render using a render farm. Now I'm gonna go into the file right now and calculate how long it would have taken if I used uh, cycles. So I've set it up exactly how it was when I used a render farm. I'm just going to render one frame and then calculate based on that how long it would have taken to do the 192 frames. Um, I'm not going to do that frame because there's nothing in it and that would uh, not take. Okay, so as you can see, this frame took 33 seconds to render, which is basically uh, exactly, almost exactly an hour and three quarters. Now, another thing people talk about in terms of render farms are the price. Obviously there is a price to this. This is basically where the argument comes for being a professional. Now if you are doing uh, projects which are commissions so you're making money off them. Now if we just quickly go back to our example project uh, this cost me $3.98 to render. What I personally do is I take this off the price of the project or the profit that I get from the profit. So let's say just for example you know, I get $500 profit for a project and, you know, and it costs me $50 to do the render farm. I just take that off. Uh, I don't charge the client extra. However, if you wanted to, you could talk to, then you could always add the cost on to the project price at the start as an estimate, or you can just, you know, communicate with the client that there's going to be a cost for the render farm at the end. And, you know, they may agree with it at the end. It's, it's sort of a, it's a business expense that saves you time. You, you might lose a little bit of profit, but I think the time that you gain personally, uh, is worth it. Okay, another thing people talk about with render farms and it's something that I actually thought a lot about um, was the intellectual rights of the content that I send to this render farm. So if you go on to the GarageNet uh, terms of service, you can find information about the rights. Now for, I don't know how, what this is, how this is for other programs or softwares, so I cannot vouch for them, but on GarageNet, uh, I've read their terms of service and according to it, 
no rights are transferred you know, once you upload them. Uh, they delete your content after 28 days. So there's a 28 day period where it's stored um, so that you can go on the GarageNet and re-render it if you need to. Uh, but after that, the files are deleted. They do declare that they won't share the content uh, with any third parties. So if you're gonna use GarageNet, I still recommend you go and read the terms of service yourself. Um, or if you're looking to use a different option, definitely read the terms of service about the intellectual rights. You don't wanna get mugged off there. Now, I do have a few tips for using Render Farms. As I mentioned, personally, I just take it off the profit for the project. Obviously, you do need to manage that. If it seems like it's gonna cost, you know, like cut your profit in a half and it's not gonna be worth it, you might as well just wait. I've never really found personally for my projects that it's taken up too much of my profit. Okay, so on Garage Farm, Garage Net, whatever, whatever I've been calling it, um, you can go on this thing called the Render Beamer and then you can submit your project. Uh, so I definitely recommend doing a test render. Now what you can do on Garage Farm is you can test uh, some renders of your animation. So you can set it to skip sort of 25 frames or 50 frames. So it only renders three frames over the course of the animation, just to make sure everything's working correctly. And when you send your file through to Garage Farm, I can only talk about how it works inside Blender because I use Blender. Um, it's just a plugin with Blender. So you just need to download the plugin and install and it's just literally three clicks and it will upload to the website or they you can then log in online and check the status of your project. From there, when before you submit it, you can set it to only do a certain amount of frames. I definitely recommend doing that first because it's gonna be very, very low cost and it just means that you can check that the project file sent over correctly. Now, if you render something all full and you find out that you know it, <laughs> it had a problem, it had any artifacts or anything, um, you're gonna be pretty annoyed because you've actually spent money there and there's actually nothing you can really do about that. It was kind of your fault, let's be honest. I would also recommend, you know, just checking your file before you send it, just double checking everything is correct in terms of the settings inside, make sure there's no objects that are, you know, showing that aren't supposed to be. It's obviously a bit more of a bummer when you spend money and then you end up having to redo it. Another thing I recommend is if you're working professionally, which I, as, I, as I mentioned before, I recommend for someone um, who's going to use render farms, I would check with your client before you render that they are happy with the result. Now, whether this is just going to be a draft version, either way, uh, you just want to make sure that there's not going to be any glaring things that they want to change. Um, or just be prepared that if there's going to be changes and things um, that you're going to have to pay again to, 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 to farm it. Personally, what I like to do is if I'm going to use a render farm for an animation project, I don't render it till the end anyway. I'll just render it in a low resolution version on my computer so it takes way less time. And then I'll have a high resolution screenshots that I send the client so they can see what it looks like in terms of high quality. Um, but then they can see the motion of the video in low quality. They can imagine themselves. You know, they just take the video of the motion and then imagine it looking like the high res screenshots. That way I, I don't render, use the render farm before because in terms of animation projects, there's usually always changes and revisions that go along the, pro, along the way. Really what you want to do is get it to a place where you've confirmed with the client that they're happy with how things are and then render farm it. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more 3D content coming soon in the new year. It's one of my new year resolutions to upload more on this channel. So make sure to subscribe right now for that. Like if this video was helpful and please do comment any questions you have about render farms, specifically garage farm, which is the one that I use and I will answer them. I may not have covered everything in this video. So if you have further questions, just ask them below.